People ask me now, Rick, when's the gold price going to move? I tell them I began rebuying bullion in 1998. So for me, the question, when is gold going to move? The answer to that is 2000. <laughs> it moved from $256 to $2,000. Uh, in other words, uh, I got an eightfold return. Gold has done exactly what I bought it to do. My suspicion is that the move in gold and later silver will be much more precipitous in the next five years than it has been in the last 20. According to a growing chorus of leading Wall Street banks, the macroeconomic backdrop for gold in 2024 is looking more bullish than ever before. The precious metal's recent glittering performance points to a telltale sign that ultimately suggests that we could be at the beginning of a new major super cycle for gold. Rick Rule, president and CEO of Rule Investment Media, LLC, foresees a positive trajectory for gold in the upcoming years, driven by a shift in economic conditions. He sees gold as crisis insurance, with the potential to reach $10,000, while recognizing potential impacts on living standards. Considering an annual growth rate of 11.2%, an ounce of gold could be worth about $2,251 in one year. In five years, an ounce of gold could be worth about $3,441, provided that the value continues to grow at a rate of 11.2%. Meanwhile, Rick prioritizes gold as a long-term financial insurance due to its historical reliability, while he remains unconcerned about short-term fluctuations. While the performance of gold can be volatile from year to year, it has proven to hold its value over long periods of time. Gold price registered a 13% annual rise in 2023, marking its best year since 2020, and seems poised to prolong its recent well-established appreciating trend. He predicts a decline in confidence in the purchasing power of U.S. dollar savings, which he believes will boost the performance of gold. Gold prices remained resilient last year, considering both the interest rate environment and the stronger U.S. dollar. As long as consumer spending patterns are strong and moderate rate cuts are anticipated, gold's flight is set to take off in 2024. Now, we present the clips of Rick Rule's insights from his recent interview with Capital Cosm. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, Please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. When people talk about an all-time high, they're talking about an all-time high in nominal terms, not in real dollar terms. Uh, if you inflation adjust the gold price into U.S. dollars, what you'll see is that it isn't at an all-time high at all, uh, that it has lots more room to run. I, I need to say that I don't pay any attention to the gold price at all in the short term. And I have absolutely no interest in whether gold's at 2100 or 2200, or for that matter, at 1900. I own gold because it is, for me, the best financial insurance class of any asset of its type in the world and has been for a thousand years. I own gold not because I think it might go to 2500, which I do, but because I'm afraid in any crisis of confidence that it'll go to $7,000 or $8,000 or $10,000. Thousand dollars. I own it as insurance. Uh, and by the way, uh, I really truly hope it doesn't go to seven thousand or eight thousand or ten thousand dollars. The set of circumstances that would cause gold to go that high would change uh, many aspects of your standard of living and my standard of living. And by the way, not for the better. <laughs> so I own a lot of it and I hope it doesn't go up a lot, but I think it will that investor expectations around gold were really put in place in the 1982 to 2022 timeframe. The most benign economic climate probably in the history of humankind. Uh, the interest rate was falling. The US dollar was strong. Globalization in a good sense was happening. Demographics favored investors. And the outcome of all of that was an expectation of financial markets that was confident. I think that's begun to change. Interest rates, uh, in a real sense, probably won't be falling. They may be manipulated lower for a while. The baby boomer demographic has peaked. There's increasing geopolitical tension. I think the next 10 years will be very different than the last 40 years have been. Uh, at the same time that I think that the level of government, which we've become accustomed to and believe that we could afford over 40 years, will become unaffordable in the next 10 years, which is to say, I expect some turmoil. And I expect that that turmoil will reduce faith in the maintenance of purchasing power of people's savings in U.S. dollar-denominated savings products and instruments. 
And hence, I suspect that gold will do very well. As I say, I don't own it because I'm looking for a move to $2,500. I own it because I'm afraid of a move to $8,000. I don't own it with anything like 100% of my net worth. Because in my experience, when gold moves, a little bit of insurance pays you a huge benefit. I lived through the decade of the 70s, $35 to $850. This was not a 20% move. I lived through 2000 to 2010, $256 to $1,900, not a 20% move. In fact, when people ask me now, Rick, when's the gold price going to move? I tell them I began rebuying bullion in 1998. So for me, the question, when is gold going to move? The answer to that is 2000. <laughs> it moved from $256 to $2,000. Uh, in other words, uh, I got an eightfold return. Gold has done exactly what I bought it to do. My suspicion is that the move in gold and later silver will be much more precipitous in the next five years than it has been in the last 20. Uh, frankly, a fact that I view with some trepidation. Rick Rule points out that in late 1975, when the Fed lost confidence and cut interest rates, gold rallied remarkably, jumping from $100 to $850 in six years. The lows of the 1970s were followed by an all-time high in 1980. Since the 2000s, gold prices have been on a general upswing, but still with relatively large fluctuations. Despite the Fed's assertion of a soft landing, he highlights potential challenges in the banking system. According to some experts, a possible wave of commercial real estate defaults threatens to prolong the U.S. regional banking crisis into 2024. It is all too likely that we will have another round of the regional bank crisis in 2024, Desmond Lockman, a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute and a former official at the International Monetary Fund, told Xinhua. Let's get back to the interview. If the circumstance that you and I have just described yeah. takes place in 2024, that in a historical context, 2024 will resemble what 1975 was, a, a period where gold consolidates and then breaks out like crazy. Yeah, People so, who didn't experience the decade of the 1970s should be reminded that the early part of the 70s exhibited incipient inflation as a consequence of the guns and butter policy. And when the gold price was deregulated, the price went from $35, uh, if my memory serves me well, to something like 200 In late 1974, 1975, the interest rate was allowed to rise, uh, which cut the gold price in half. We didn't see that this go round. Uh, we saw the interest rate increase at the same time that the gold price increased. But in late 1975, when the Fed lost its nerve uh, and reduced interest rates, what you saw is that the markets saw that the Fed wasn't serious about inflation and Congress wasn't serious about inflation. And gold really, truly went on a tear. Uh, it went from $100 an ounce, if my memory serves me correctly, to $850 an ounce in six short years. And I think the market knows that uh, Congress is much more interested in spending than they are in fighting inflation. I, I think gold would really, really do something. I think that the Fed can say with a small degree of accuracy that they have engineered a soft landing. Uh, the economy is intact. It isn't intact for those people who've lost their jobs. The real estate market hasn't collapsed. It's just that liquidity has disappeared. We haven't yet uh, felt the impact in the banking system, the problems that are in front of commercial real estate, particularly office real estate. And I think the Fed can say, but we did what you asked us to do. Uh, we've engineered a soft landing. Uh, I think there's tremendous political pressure and tremendous pressure among the voters uh, to lower the interest rate. Uh, and I suspect if they can get away with it, that they're going to do it. If history is anything to go by, then gold's record-breaking performance this year is just a taster of what is yet to come. That's welcoming news for the bulls, but painful for anyone sitting on the sidelines who must now decide how much FOMO they can handle. How do you see gold fitting into your investment strategy, considering its recent performance and the predicted trends for the future? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to support our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos. See you in the next video.